uminawa kaning litanya kabahin ning bisda kung paghigugma para buyag kasing kasing kiat para buyag atik panileon kilat pagpanggao gay pas puso sa larsan muhumok ibaw sa baw sa linaran humok og ilong tanala agtas kulon at tuon tadapit nga makasaysayon labik sa dila o brutsa sa pulong dugan mo siguradong makumong kumo hugot pasuot hugot pasuot ah uh, hugot pasuot bahalag saging basta labing bahalag buwat basta tupad bahalag toyo basta with you bahalag inamos basta ang ako bahalag hilaw basta ikaw bahalag gorni basta perme bahalag lanay basta tanday bahalag dukot basta lang hugot hugot pasuot hugot pasuot kasing kasing tapuno sa kahibuan hugot pasuot hugot pasuot ikaw ako forever walay magbuot hugot pasuot hugot pasuot di sa gipat patman sa tumang kalimot hugot pasuot Ipunan. Hugot pa suot, hugot pa suot Kasing-kasing ka puno sa kahimuan Hugot pa suot, hugot pa suot Ikaw ako forever, wala'y magpuot Um, I'm Radel Paredes. So I'm a teacher sa uh, Department of Fine Arts sa uh, University of San Carlos. At the same time, I, uh, I'm a practicing artist. No, I, I write for the newspapers also. As an artist, I was exposed to Japanese na mga potters o so mga ceramic artists ba na. In the first place, ang ilang, ilang work, wala, wala bitaw pretense na ka ng art yun, fine art yun. They like, like to think of it as something utilitarian. Pero actually, if you look closely, no, Marabag, ang ilang philosophy sa ilang trabaho is actually very profound. No? So, ganahan ko sa inyo ng idea. So, that's why for me right now, Marabag, I'm very much interested in kind of rediscovering crafts uh, like carving, uh, wood sculpture, or wood carving is actually one of the native arts that goes back even to... Uh, the colonial times. In a way, by by using that as medium, it's also like reconnecting no? um, in terms of art sa ato kanang native na heritage. Wala gid tay klaro bitaw murag diligid kayo klaro ang information about ni Lapu Lapu. So there's a lot of mystery about him. Ang gidugbot ang gihiksulat lang ni Pigapeta nga, 
Magellan was killed by a group of kind of, natives, di ba? Wala man gi-specify ni, ni Pigapeta nga sila pulapo gid ang nipatay ni Magellan. So knowing nga naay ingana nga mystery, that is also what I wanted to show in my work. I don't want to perpetuate the myth, kind of mythologizing ba sa history ba nga si Napulapo gid mo nipatay kang Magellan, okay? Wala man gid na siya sa sa history. So, mo na sa akong work kanang wala gid na ako gi portray si Napulapo no, but instead, ang ako lang gipakita is kanang mata na murag ni represent kang Napulapo. And then what is shown is Magellan being killed by a group of natives, no? Ganahan ko nga uh, ipakita lang ang mystery, ang ambiguity actually sa sa nahita mo, di ba? Ang 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 mystery ni Napulapo. you'll see now and it's composed of uh, three planar divisions so if you notice I always have this kind of image screen the you know, octagon no? and then I usually divide my composition into three planar divisions you know? so if you notice this line if you continue that line it goes up to here no so that's the first plane no then after that uh, this line here padong dire so one in siya no and then this one here ana ni siya the three pillar divisions uh, it brings my advocacy to promote the importance of loving god loving your country and of course loving the family Realize ako nga, dito, no? ang, ang ginuusahin mo, kung gamit pala siya mga deficient thing to, to showcase his power, ah, sa muna akong himoon nga motivation nga. So, hi, kita, kanyang instrument rin dito sa ginuusahin. I read about palm grass in social media. Lahat sa nila, no, nindot din sila kaya nag-promote o kanang heritage ba? Sa buwan heritage ba yun, no? Dagang kayo mga hotel sa Cebu, pero hindi sila, sila rin hotel na nag-promote o being a Cebu, ano? Mufit pa ni sa akong akong team, sa akong advocacy, ba, no? Ang ang ako na nahibawan kay uh, before Bangun, ang idea nga ang Pilipino wa gyud before. No but through this through the research kay bago nga nada detay mga activities pa before like kaning mga barter system, no kanang nada detay kanang our, our own way of living ba. Kay ang ang gipromote pangod sa history kato nang bango after sa Spanish time, no. Hopefully, uh, kanang 
through, through this painting, makarealize ang mga younger generations na we should also go beyond what we usually see ba.
who love our motherland in our every breath and with every drop of our blood, sweat, and tears. be seated. We would like to recognize the partners who are here. Uh, some of them are here today. Some are watching us online. We would like to recognize the National Quincentennial Committee, Museo Subbo. I think I see someone there, Central Visayas Association of Museums, SOAN 2020 Incorporated, and the Diandi Heritage Center headed by the Dr. Rizil Mojares, national artist. And we would also like to recognize, uh, in general, members of the audience from the Department of Education, the Pasil Knight High School, uh, the Philippine National Police, University of the Philippine Cebu, Philippine Fiber Indust Industry Development Authority, Delphic Research and Cebu Normal University. Also, of course, University of San Carlos, just a stone's throw away. Cebu Institute of Technology University. University of San Carlos Museum. Honey Entertainment Incorporated. BLP Comercia. School Division of Taguig City and Pateros. Culture Arts and Design Association of the Philippines Incorporated. So a big hand to all our uh, very special representatives of these institutions. May we call on now Agrippina Guivilondo, who is the lead representative of the Palm Grass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel, for her message. everyone gathered here today and to those joining us online in this hybrid art and heritage event maayong hapon maayong hapon sa tanan so uh, we are glad that you are here today even with uh, because in, in our safe event so we are we are uh, we made efforts so that we will have a safe event in this um, um, limited on-site event today when we interviewed the great great grandson of Cebu hero General Maximum, Philippine Air Force Major Roldan Talaugon, he told us that he knew about his hero ancestor through the stories told to him by his father. And that's the story behind the name of the street in uptown Cebu City, the General Maximum Avenue. But sadly, the majority of Cebuanos and Filipinos do not know who, who General Maximum is and the valiant feats he did for our country. Would our local heroes' sacrifices just be forgotten? Today is a testament that we did not forget and that we will not forget. Today, 
we shall unveil a work of art that tells us the story of a Cebuano who fought until the end for his great love for Cebu and our country. At Palm Grass, our hero's stories are retold through art, through the wood sculptures and visual art displayed on our walls, through the videos that we produce and we screen, through the books that we publish, the plays as we stage by our youth, the Bagong Chaka Mokera, the poems and songs that we write and perform. It is even told through the floors, the rooms, the dishes and drinks named in their honor. These stories in different art, form, art forms are acts of remembering and are acts of love. We express our great love and admiration of our hero sacrifices through these stories told through art. We thank our sculptor, artist, Gradel Paredes, who is also a Katipuanero descendant, for sharing his talent and creating a masterpiece entitled General Arcadio Maxilum, Maxilum, depicting the valor of our great Cebuano hero. A big round of applause for our artist. So this is the third of the seven wood sculptures for the seven floors of Pangras, named in honor of Cebu heroes and personalities in Cebu history. So you should watch out for four more pieces. So, <laughs> so this afternoon, we shall also screen a video on General Maxilum, on, entitled General Maxilum, The Last Man Standing. The video is created by the Pangras Multimedia and Heritage Team, Agrippina, Ian Yu, our uh, Chris Iscaniola, our heritage coordinator, with the crew, Daniel Baino, Lito, Kabaging, Kobe, Joshua, and Arman. So, kanang mga guapo diri, mauni sila. So, so, we also thank those who helped us create the video, those who, whom we interviewed, scholars, Dr. Michael Colonnade. It's a remote interview through only, uh, through online interview. And Dr. Jobbers Reynes Bersales, the uh, Maxilum descendants and relatives, Philippine Army Colonel Danilo Maxilum Talaugon, Marivir Montibon, also a uh, New York-based journalist and a relative of General Maxilum. And those in Tuburan, all of those, the descendants of General Maxilum in Tuburan who assisted us. And then we also thank the local government of Tuburan who facilitated our visit in Tuburan with Mayor Danilo Diamante and Vice Mayor Aljun Diamante, with Executive Assistant Steve Salipot, and also, we were also assisted by the Tuburan Miss Siglakas, Beryl Intabo. We also thank the tips given to us by our communications as advisor, Prospero Lapot of Social Communications Asia. You would like to recognize and thank the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, the Central Visayas Association of Museums and Museo Sudbu, represented by Masi Cabanes, and also the Cebu City Histor Cultural and Her Historical Affairs Commission, represented by Briner and Orland, for joining us and giving us their messages today. So, daghang salamat for being with us. We thank the DepEd Region 7, our partner in our extemporaneous speech contest last November, the birthday month of General Maxilum, in which the grade school students in Cebu Island passionately spoke about, the, about Cebuano heroism, heroism and the heroism of General Arcadio Maxilum. We also thank the Cebu poets who joined the poetry contest for General Maxilum. Indeed, we did not forget. We continue to give homage to our local heroes for their undying love for our motherland. We remember the stories told through art. We remember through the stories told through art. This act of love, an act of remembering, will hopefully inspire all of us, especially the young generation, to emulate and continue our hero's legacy. Daghang salamat. That was really... Uh...
an impassioned speech, especially coming from one who has sustained uh, the advocacy of culture, heritage, and history in Cebu. Palm Grass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel, has really stood by its name. So once again, a big hand for Agrippina. So, uh, my goodness, you are here, the, the cat advocate, the dog advocate, but at the same time, a heritage advocate. I've known her since she was very young. She will give us a message uh, this afternoon uh, on behalf of Museo Sugbo. Maria Cecilia Cabanes Masi to everyone, the museum curator. Uh, hello, my hapon kanatong tanan. So I'm uh, Masi Cabanyas. I'm from Museo Sugbo, and in uh, Museo Sugbo we also have uh, we were donated. Uh, to according to the si Mam Caridad Yaniha mentioned about the son of about the grandson of Colonel Talaogon. Uh, actually, they donated. Uh, usa sa mga weapons kuno to magigamit which is believed to be gigamit kuno to ni uh, General Maxilo uh, kani adto and we also have as part of our collection uh, sinulat ni uh, former mayor Vicente Rama about the biography of uh, General Arcadio Maxilo which are interesting things to see if you visit the museum once we are in alert number 2 Kay Karun, uh, di pa mangyuta dali-dali maka-duaw sa ato ang museum. At buhon, hinaot maka-duaw ta dito. Uh, tinood sa itong gingo ni Ma'am Caridad ganiha, no, nga, sometimes uh, we, we do not forget, kinsagot tayong maka-limot sa tao nga ang iyahangan o sa mga dalan diri sa uh, Cebu, uh, sa Kainumdum po sa estudyante pa ko, magsigig badhas-badhas anang General Maxilum, kaya akong skwilahan di ulraman dito. Pero sa akong kabatan un, wag yung kukaila kinsana si General Maxilum. Huwag ako ni trabaho museum, di isa kukaila anang kauhana. And then I came to realize that he was called the last man standing because bisan pa sa kadaugan, nilang atong panahon na against sa mga kasila, wala gihapon siya muhunong sa pagbisog o pagigbatok sa uh, sa kolonyal no, nga pamunuan ka ni Adto. And for that kind of life he lived, I think that is what we should be inspired of karong panahuna. Kay for the last couple of years, yutag, ang, ang COVID palang daan, di ba? It destroyed our our economy and uh, naapiktuhan sa datong health, daghan kaayo ang naapiktuhan sa COVID. Unya, ni Arto na untang panahon, na nakabango na unta ta, hinay-hinay na untang balik atong ekonomiya, just recently, ikusupuso sa nakabisayan sa bagyo nga odet, na daghan sa mga kinabuhi nga nakalas, daghan sa mga panginabuhi nga naapiktahan. So how should we be inspired after the life of uh, Arcadio Maximo? Being the last man standing, ang minsahi anak sa iyang kinabuhi, diri ka na to, is dili lang yuta muho na. Padayon lang yuta sa ato ang pakigbiso. Kung giunsan niya pakigbiso ka ni ato, mausad ang ato ang pakigbiso ka ro. And we are so thankful for artists like Sir Radel na naagyot sila'y passion to relive history through their artwork. Usan ni sa ato ang appreciation nga makita sa ato mga artists that they're beginning to I, I mean they've they've done it no before pagyud nga mugamit sila og uh, his, uh, history nato as as subjects of their paintings and we appreciate that so much in the Philippine quincentennial celebration gipaagi sa paagi sa paintings uh, daghan sad og nakatunan ang ato ang mga kabatan unan because learning is very visual and with artworks like this, kinulit, so it's it's 
a very beautiful i i believe that this is a very beautiful piece a learning tool for students and for visitors na kung wanhi sila sa Pamgras Hotel makakita sila og handumanan sa kinabuhi ni Arkadio Maxilong pinaagi ni Mindot nga kinulit sa usa pa gyud ka bantugan og tinahod uh, nga artist diri sa Cebu as si Sir Radel Pareto so I hope we all enjoy the activity this afternoon. Maura to akong message in behalf of Museo Subo and the Central Visayas Association of Museums and Biandi, kaya wala man atong representatives karun. I hope you all enjoy the afternoon. Kung hi fachoy daan, Happy New Year na huwag ma sa Chinese. So, so thank you. Kung hi fachoy gita daan, na ba kay dugong insexy? General Arcadio Maxilum, lagmit kay ang mga prominente sa mga kalungsuran, uh, mistiso insik mangyud ko no, matud pa ni Colonel. So, uh, salamat kaayo, Mas. Thank you so much for your message. We would like to acknowledge uh, online audience, Tagig National High School, Ricardo P. Cruz Senior Elementary School, Palar Integrated School, Signal Village National High School, Eusebio Santos Elementary School, and Flag Double G, F L A G G Incorporated. So thank you for watching us. Now we would like to welcome a performance by one of our grown, homegrown artists. I think two of them, uh, Mabel and Jomar for Uyugi Ko. Come with me. No, no. Kuyugan mo ka ko sa kalayo nito pas 
Andam tao pa ng subo Para maling kawas Puyong di mo Di huni mo kuyukan Inun ikag talawan Di nakakatilaw Sa humba o ginilaw Ah, ah, kuyog yung lagi ko, hindi man ko mamugus Kuyog ang buga ko sa tagahapon, hindi humabon Kuyog yung lagi ko, hindi man ko mamugus Kuyog ang buga ko sa kalayo nito pas Andam ka o ba ng subo Para maling kawas Puyong ni mo, puyong ni mo, puyong ni mo. Wow, that was really. That's a composition of someone we know, but we will not advertise that today. Yeah, because that's another story in itself. That's uh, Mabel, <laughs> Mabel and Jomar of the Bagong Teatro Hongkera, homegrown, organized right here by Palm Grass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel. Now, this is a big message from our friend, Mr. Briner Diaz, the division chief of the of CHAP, the Cebu City Cultural and Historical Affairs Office. Dr. Briner. Kuna sa tanan akong nasingkasing yukbo sa management and staff sa Pamgrass Hotel. May nga tapag PGH. Pwede lini hospital. <laughs> Pamgrass Hotel. Uh, ako di ay si Brian Diaz, ang Division Chief sa Cultural and Historical Affairs Office. Mangota na siguro mo unsay kalainan sa Chow o sa Chak. Ang Chow mo ang implementing arm oh. sa Cebu City Government sa mga programa ni ini sa kultura eh kasaysayan o the heritage preservation of sa arts. Mm. Mm, apan ang CHAC, mao ang policy making body. Sila mo'y maghimo sa mga rules and regulations o kung say ang ay sundon o kung say ang ay dili sundon, kami rin patuman. So mo na ang among kalahian. Ang CHAC, ang iyang chairman, mao ang vice mayor sa Dakbayan sa Sukbo, karon mao si vice mayor Donaldo Dondon Conteveros. Sa atong mga bisita, friends from the media, I say familiar, uh, I see familiar faces, no? Nang paborito ka, yung layout artist ni Ma'am Linda Alburo, sa Joshua. Ngayong wow. hapon siya. Sa <laughs> ato ang artist ni atong Basidunggan karong hapon, ha? Sir Radel Paredes, ngayong hapon ka, sa imuhang pamilya. No? Sa tanan nga ni Adinhi, labi na sa ato ang uh, mga culture, cultural and heritage worker din is Dakpayan sa Subo. General Arcadio Mulira Maxilom, also known as Tancadio, was a native of Tuburan. Unfortunately, I grew up in stories. No? Sikbit ras Tuburan. Muna nga, nakahibaw ko kinsa ni siya samtang bata pa ko. He served as Kapitan Municipal of Tuburan from 1892 to 1896. Many of the conspirators of the Tuburan uprising were brothers and nephews of Tancadio. Thus, his clan was known to be a family of soldiers even up to these days. General Arcadio was one of the leading revol revolutionary forces. He was even the commander, Denise Sukbo during the Spanish and American colonial period. The hate towards inequality, brutality, 
maltreatment, and aristocracy lead him to fight gallantly against these foreign colonialists. During the 1898 Cebu Revolution, as a recruit of the KKK, General Arcadio served as an officer under the supreme command of Pantaleon Villegas, or Leon Ilan. He played a significant role in the assault of Fort San Pedro uprising that led to the end of the Spanish sovereign. When the American forces took control of the islands after the Treaty of Paris, General Maximum, together with the other revolutionary leaders, took up arms against the superior armed Americans. He was captured and imprisoned for months together with the revolutionary leaders, but his fearless act did not end. Together with Climaco, Luga, and Nicolas Godinez, they surrendered to the Americans on October 27, 1901, thus ending the revolution in Cebu. After his death on August 10, 1924, like any other significant Cebuanos, an act passed by the Municipal Board of Cebu, renamed Mango Avenue to General Arcadio Maxilom Avenue. May today's event of unveiling of General Arcadio Maxilom's wood art relief by Sir Tadel Paredes brings greater impact to the Cebuano community and its history. His love for the country and heroic deeds are worthy to be remembered. No? Especially to this generation, nga generations uh, online. No? The name General Arcadio Maxilom shall not only be remembered as a street name or a name in a book, but shall be in the hearts and minds of every Cebuanos. The Cultural and Historical Affairs Office of the City of Cebu would like to congratulate Pamgrass for this initiative taken in preserving the heritage and culture of Cebuanos. We in Chao continue to appreciate such efforts from the private sector that help us in the advocacy of promoting our own, our own heroes, our own story. May this culture serve us as a reminder of the magnificent story of the Cebuano as exemplified in General Arcadio Maxilum, bravery, gallant, and heroic. Mayong hapo. Mayong hapon, good. Salamat kaayo, Mr. Briner Diaz, for giving us the salient difference between Chak and Chow. Salamat kaayo. Murat na ay sigil. Forgive us. Thank you so much. Uh, now, we want to call on the Bagong Teatro once again. Teatro Hunkera. Oh, they're not here. The different performance. Okay. So, we have a video message from the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Uh, a message from Alvin Alcid of the NHCP OIC Deputy Director. It's a video message. Maayong hapon sa atong tanan. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. It is an honor and privilege to join you in this afternoon's event to unveil this wood relief art of General Arcadio Maxilum, your very own hero from Tuburan, who during the Philippine Revolution in 1898 left his comfort zones as a teacher and Capitan Municipal of his hometown and integrated Cebu in the struggle for independence. It is interesting to note the role of Cebuanos in this struggle. It was in Cebu where the Spaniards first met opposition in 1521 in the Battle of Mactan. It was also here in Cebu where one of the last battles against the Spanish rule more than 300 years later was fought under the leadership of Maxilom, whom we are honoring today. 
A man of courage, Maximum did not back down after the death of his fellow patriot and leader, Leon Kilat. Instead, he continued the leadership. of the revolution in Cebu until the Spanish forces surrendered. He continued to fight for Filipino freedom during the Philippine-American War and was among the last Filipino generals to surrender in 1901. We at the National Historical Commission of the Philippines thank Palm Grass Hotel for keeping the memory and legacy of Cebuano heroes like Maxilom alive through this wood art relief. You almost converted your business space into a museum which is worthy of emulation. We also congratulate the artist Rafael Radel Paredes for putting this beautiful piece of art. Thank you. That was a very nice message, and I just learned today that he was Capitan Municipal. It's equivalent to the mayor of today. So he was pretty prominent. And a teacher, uh, he so he is part, or he was part of the Principalia, the local elites. Since the 1860s, uh, the Spanish government uh, uh, decreed that those who become teachers will become members of the Principalia and can use the title of Don or Donia. So, Don Yuto Si General Maxilum. Uh, and a part of the native elite of Tuburan. So thank you very much, uh, Alvin Alcid, sir. Uh, now we have uh, a more in-depth view of General Maxilum, the last man standing. Uh, Palm Grass has pre prepared a video, uh, a, a documentary, a short video uh, on the life of General Maxilum. Si Arcadio Maxilum usagid sa pinakadugay na ni surrender sa gubat. No? Daganan ka ng mga, mga leaders sa uh, anti-Spanish nga war before that. Nga murag uh, mas nauna sa pag-surrender. -pag Pero lahi si, si Maxilum kay medyo dugay git sa ni surrender. No? So ni away git sa kontra. starts with a, an increasingly important town on the northwest coast of Cebu. Many people are competing for the land in that area, and the most prominent landowners in Tuburan were the Maxilom family and the Tabu Tabu family. The primary competitors with the Maxilom family in Tuburan during the late 19th century were the Tabu Tabu family. These two families are now connected, and that Fausto Tabu Tabu the contrabida of Ar Arcadio Maximo, it, they're actually stepbrothers. What brought Arcadio to Cebu City and to San Nicolas? And that was, of course, after he was, after the Tabo Tabo family began to take over the politics of Tuburon, they were already feuding with one another. Arcadio moved to San Nicolas in around 1896. Tabo Tabo Fausto accused him, slandered him of being head of the Katipo one of the terrorists of the Katipunan in Manila. He decided to leave his family and move to San Nicolas, which at the time, when there is preparation for revolution. Maxinom's educational level was much less. We realized that he worked closely with this parish priest of Tuburan, a man named Mauricio, uh, Father Mauricio Esmero. Esmero was very influ influential in teaching Spanish to Arcadio Maxinom. So he was educated locally. He is a leader from the town of Tuburan who comes to the city of Cebu towards the end of the 19th century. And in San Nicolas is where he met many of the people who were later involved in Ankagubut Sasupu in April of 1898. He became a part of that community 
and he, be, he began to be influenced by many of the changes that were occurring all over the Philippines in the end of the 1890s. He lived there, he met and worked with Luis Flores, uh, Candido Padilla, all of the major leaders of the Anca in April of 1898, in that spot where he became and emerged as a leader. Si Tancadio was a natural leader. Kanang magdula ang mga bata, silang mga bata, mo organize dayo na siya. In the face of Spanish uh, oppression, he was totally against it. The Spanish Guardia Civil occupied Kumuran. He observed tyrannies and lucids from the Guardia Civil to the Muslim women. Tancadio, he was the, a very brave general. Pero pag abot na gani sa family life, pag abot na sa asawa, mahadlok na na siya. He was considered under the asaya. After the Kagobot, the rebels, as we know, were chased out of Cebu City by the re Spanish reinforcement. He continued his march to the town of Tuburan. Together with 30 people, he entered the town and warned the civil guards surrendered without shedding blood. However, on April 15, the steamers Baiz and Vitkaya arrived and the battle of Tuburan began. This, is, this lasted for eight hours from 5.30 in the morning until 1 a.m. and his brothers, cousin and nephews died. This combat left the town deserted and because of the anger of the Casadores, they burned the entire town but they saved the church, the convent and the Camarin of Fausto Tabo Tabo. General Arcadio Maxelom and other Tuburanons encamped at the mountain of Anihau after the Battle of Tuburan against Spanish forces in mid-April 1898. The mountain, which is now known as Bateria, also became one of Maxelom's camps in the war against the Americans. Eventually, they took refuge at Sudlon, you know, up in the hills, and prepared to, to defend Sudlon against the Spanish. Ako lang gipakita dere ang usa ka murag scene sa gubat no kay si Maxilom ang godagan man siya kaning battles no kay um, gikan sa katong ilang uh, revolusyon uh, kontra sa mga Spaniards no and then sa kuan pod uh, ang ila sang kaning gubat uh, kontra sa mga Amerikano so, makita dere nga si si General Maxilo Morag, ni emerge ano Morag, Morag sa ni Saka gikan sa sa trenches Morag medyo maalam sa tiragamay sa sa kaning art of war no. Ni Saka siya sa trench so it, it's a it's a sign of bravery on his part no. Ang young leadership na dinhi siya mahadlok uh, against the bullets. Kaning mga leader mangod sa una, kung doon na sila yung mga, uh, mga vision to, to, to lead towards freedom, towards um, emancipation from mga tyranny, oppression. Doon ang, ang hunahuna na nila, it's God-given. It's being, it's being ordered by God. So sila, um, kusog na kayo ang pamati o panghunahuna na they are um, endowed with uh, divine powers that's being passed on generationally to those that's being seen as somebody who can lead. In almost uh, encounter he has, always victorious, yet he's not, he's not seen in the area of operation. There were talks of my anting anting kanang anting anting Luis Flores, President of the Republic of the Republican uh, Philippine Republican 
representatives in Cebu, with the other generals around him, elects Arcadio Maxilo as governor of Cebu to replace Spanish General Montero. Mm. Knowing that the, the Spanish authorities in Cebu and the Guardia Civil of the Spanish authorities were weakening, he wrote a letter demanding him to leave Cebu. The Spanish government, led by Montero, surrendered Cebu and its officials, official properties to the revolution. He hears of the arrival of the American gunboat Petrel. The flag of the Americans were already raised at Fort San Pedro. Some of the leaders of Cebu City at the time signed the peace document. They surrendered the city to the Americans. But the rest of the forces and many of the people who were civilians in it, they didn't surrender. They moved to San Nicolas. Then when the Americans spread out into San Nicolas, they moved to El Pardo. Maximum has not himself surrendered, but many people in Cebu City had surrendered. He stood until everything else had fallen. The local leaders have decided to capitulate. There was an era of prosperity awaiting for the new colonial master. And so the uh, local elites grabbed that opportunity. But not General Maxilong and everybody else who were on his side. Eventually, the Americans prevailed later in, in 1900, in, in January of 1900, against the Americans who were attacking. He surrenders and what you have to do when you surrender to the Americans is you had to take a loyalty oath but then later after he realized that the Americans were really taking control and, and he began to have similar feuds with people even in Tuvaran again right he begins to decide that he needed to resurrect the, the revolution against the Americans actually he did not surrender there was no difference of the statement is, is said I will not go there to read there my gap. Anvil Awards. We should give that to the Anvil Awards for that should win. Very good. Yeah, I just learned again, just interpolate, that um, I'm on the side of the Tabu Tabus because of an epigamous marriage. So, but anyway, the Maxillums are related. I learned that brother. That was very interesting. So now, this is the big moment. We have to unveil the artwork of the artist, uh, artist de jour, Radel Paredes. And may we call on Agrippina with the Rondo and Radel Paredes to be here right in front as we have to unveil. Yes. And of course, Mr. Briner Diaz, Miss Massey here should all be planned uh, the size of the artwork. It's, it's a wood kinulit in Cebuano, right? Kinulit, gikan sa tugas, a very hard wood, mulabe. It's a very interesting work. It's being undressed. Oh, no, I mean revealed. <laughs> that was intentional. Yeah. Microphone, please, to Ms. Christina, because she is uh, privy to the months that went into So we would work. like to present you to unveil today 
this product of love and hard work by our artist, uh, sculptor Radel Paredes. And this is the wood sculpture, General Arcadio Maximum. Wow, big hand. <laughs> Take a close look before uh, uh, Radel Paredes will give us a message on his hard work. Dagang salamat, dagang salamat sa pagtambong, no? First of all, uh, I, I, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge lang a few friends of mine who came here. Uh, Dr. Levi Lanaria, uh, my colleague in the University of San Carlos, and then. Uh, uh, the poet uh, Larry Ipil, uh, who is also a professor in the uh, National Larry University Gale. of Singapore. Welcome back. And uh, Lisa Marinas from Sunstar and my artist friend Joshua Cabrera. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, Palm Grass Hotel for giving me uh, this opportunity to help you know, in our common uh, advocacy to promote uh, not just art, but uh, local uh, history, particularly uh, uh, to spot uh, to give uh, spotlight on our uh, local heroes, because as we all know, um, uh, the contribution of uh, the, the southern provinces in the revolution was not really uh, <clears throat> given. Uh, attention no, in, in our history because when we think of the Philippine Revolution or the Katipunan, uh, it's almost always that we think of, you know, the uh, only the, the struggles in the Son no, or the so-called eighth race of the Philippine uh, flag, no, which is why I think it should have been an uh, indefinite number of race. Uh, anyway, um, so like most of us, uh, I first came across uh, General Maximum no, as a street, diba? which is uh, even confused as Mango Avenue. No? So, <laughs> uh, uh, so this project uh, led me to to learn more no, um, about our heroes, about the stories behind the street names and. So uh, for this work, uh, I had to read, uh, for example, books like *The War in Cebu*, uh, *The War Against the Americans* by uh, Russell Mujares, you no, know, and uh, uh, actually reading it, you no, know, it's it's like watching a movie, you no, know, it's so action-filled. So we learn about the the struggles, you no, know, that uh, our local Katipuneros like Maxilum had fighting against the Spaniards and then later against the Americans, you know, their desperation, uh, and then uh, uh, how they, they really fought hard, how they really had to mount a, a very decent resistance you know, uh, against the Americans, against a very modern army, but uh, and eventually uh, surrender, you know, uh, of course. Uh, but uh, again, as we have learned from the video, Maximum was among those who really uh, gave up uh, last. No, in, in fact, uh, he was the last man standing. Uh, but uh, like any good movie or any good story, I would rather spare you of the details and not be a spoiler. So it's an, uh, that's up to you to to uh, discover this uh, joy of um, knowing more about our our past. So, again, thank you very much. Thank you. A big hand for Radel Paredes. Thank you so much, Radel. It's really a beautiful piece of work and very significant in the years to come because we very seldom immortalize our heroes in art, except in monuments, of course. No? So, uh, I have a question for you, Radel, from one of the audience. I think this is an online audience. Uh, the question is, and please answer. Yeah. Among our national artists who inspired you 
Who inspired you the most and why? Do you conduct travel exhibit to make your artworks? Um, I think sick to the common tao. I think he means make your artworks available to the common tao. So these are two questions from uh, uh, Sir Eddie Aparti Apartisho. Uh, among our national artists, who inspired you the most and why? That's the first question. I think it's still uh, Juan Luna for me. Juan Luna. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as to the second question. Uh, uh, do you conduct travel exhibits um, to make your artworks available to the common tao? Um, I just uh, take part in uh, group shows, you no, know, like uh, uh, my uh, my recent most recent uh, participation was actually with the Printmakers Association of the Philippines in the mm -hmm. Cultural Center of the Philippines, you no. Know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I also I also used to do uh, workshops a lot, you no. Know? And I think one of them was. Uh, one of the workshops that I gave was a terracotta uh, sculpture workshop for the victims of the, I mean, the, the, the families no, uh, of the victims of the Maguindano massacre. So we went to, uh, to the uh, Sultan Kodarat you know, for that workshop. And I'm very proud of, the, of being able to, to do that workshop. Yes. Uh, my, my question, personal question, how has this pandemic uh, IATF uh, protocols prevented you from reaching out to the public? Has it been very bad? Um, actually, it's not really so bad because I think we just shifted to online you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, platform. You know, and, uh, for example, in USC, where I teach, so I think uh, um, we, we, we experienced uh, some adjustment at the start, but uh, we were able to really do online teaching uh, mm. uh, well no we, we got adjusted to it and I think it uh, there are uh, pros and cons actually you know and for me it works uh, uh, I think it's there are more advantages for me because of course you're just at home so you can do your art at the same mm -hmm. time no? even as you prepare for mm -hmm. for your classes also. Mm -hmm. uh, just one more one more thing Radel uh, you are using a very uh, hard wood, tugas, molave. How difficult is it from the other woods that you have been using before? Actually, um, yeah, it's a bit hard, no? And uh, I'm also actually just new to, to wood sculpture, no? so it's, all, it's still really a learning process. But uh, uh, you really need to, to, to have good uh, tools, no? so good chisels, no? Um, I, I got some locally made chisels, but um, I also uh, uh, have uh, to rely on really good chisels, and you have to sharpen them always. To, to, always. Uh, because with sharp chisels, then it becomes actually easy to, yes. to work on wood like this. Yeah. It, yeah. Now a question from the audience uh, uh, or reaction. Yes, please. Uh, a reaction from anyone in the audience? Christian Bonpoa, you have any reaction? Yes. Uh, I think Masi has something to say. As uh, she has done. Oh, yes. So, reaction or comment or encouragement? Yes, there is a reaction. It will be read to us. Oh, from Ferdi Apartisho. He's the one from Tagig. Wow, pag, Pagbati, sir, you're such an accomplished and dedicated artist. Thank you. Wow. Salamat po. Oh, somebody, Annie Rose Benitez earlier. Good afternoon, watching from... Capitan Eddie T. Reyes, Integrated School, SDO Tapat. And then, um, oh, uh, 
Mr. Upper Tissue is asking you again what tips you can give to our budding artists, especially our learners. Um, if you want to be an artist, uh, you need to not only to to learn more about art, but you also need to have a, a great, uh, I mean, a big mind, no? So you need to, to be a wide reader, for example, because, uh, of course, art is all about ideas, no? So you also really need to, to widen your, your knowledge, no? But you also really need to work hard, no? So doing things like this takes really a lot of time to, to do, no? And, uh, yeah, you need to, to learn craft as well, no? So, in fact, I'm still amazed by, by our local carvers, those people who do the Kanamanga Santos, di ba? So I'm, I'm really, I have great respect for, for, these, uh, for these artists. Wow, there are a lot of comments mm -hmm. there. One from Fej uh, Bagaho, Badiang Sagario. Good afternoon, everyone watching from KJCISSDO Tapat. Okay, and Nell Noisel, I think one of our tour, tour guides. No? Mm -hmm. Fabulous art. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and there are so much more. I think we have a question from Jose Pagirigan Vinarao. How many days or weeks and months before you finished your masterpiece, <laughs> sir? I think he, me um, he means this. Actually, I stopped counting, no. But there were there were a lot of times when the work was stalled, no, like uh, during the typhoon, because uh, we, we didn't have electricity, so it's hard to to work uh, 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 when it's a bit dark, no. So, and uh, I can't just move this; it's very heavy, no. Uh, so, maybe na na slow down on akong during the time, no. But uh, it's months, no. Months of work. Yeah. Yes. And I, I could not really work straight, so that's another problem. Ever the artist, of course. We cannot, yeah. you know, mm. even I, who pretends to be. And and a lot of it also goes to research. No, it's, uh, you really research, need to read, yeah. for example, the, the, the life of Maximum. Mm -hmm. But it is obvious that you're a natural, because as you said, you're just new to sculptures, but this is really very good and um, very meaningful as i said and actually oh. some details here uh, you learn from research like for example the rifle i try to be accurate they're using the spanish rolling block mm. which was the uh, the rifle that the spaniards were using so can, it, can the, you point it out to the audience this one. there and then this is the i think this is a remington uh, repeater carbine mm. so so things like that you have to you know, you try to be accurate, but of course, uh, you can't be 100%, I mean, uh, uh, accurate, no, because uh, it's art, so there's, uh, uh, A good evening from Andy Padernilia. Mm -hmm. What is General Maxillum holding? Um, uh, this is uh, another important thing, no, so I'm, I'm representing him as uh, uh, carrying a pistol and a sword which are uh, mm. the usual weapons of uh, a, an officer like a general no so officers don't 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 use rifles no mm. in fact uh, during this time they usually just have swords no mm. and pistols. Uh, so and if you notice it's it's even uh, a western looking sword no mm -mm. so you know during this time just like uh, the the katiponeros uh, uh, served uh, French cuisine, diba? During the, itong, sa to, sa Manolo's Congress, diba? No? So, French, they, they, they really tried to really, you know, uh, be modern, no? Updated um, themselves. Yeah. Very sophisticated. Yeah, so, I think that's one thing we forgot, that our ancestors yeah. were already very exposed to the to global the global. Experience. And another thing that I distinguished him is, if you notice, everyone's wearing a hat, no? except for the general. No? So he's above his men because he's standing uh, uh, on the trenches, no? and everyone's uh, um, um, 
Uh, nasa sa ubos, diba? On the lower ground. Yeah. So, he is distinguished by not wearing a hat. So, mm. yeah. And the cannon? Is yeah, the cannon? cannon. So, this is, uh, again, they had weapons. I mean, it's not much, but they tried to make do with what they have. No? So, they have small artillery pieces, no? And, uh, like old cannons against a more modern uh, American artillery, artillery, you know? And rifles, yeah. And uh, Jose Pagirigan Binarao says again, thank you, sir, for being an inspiration to us, especially to the young generation, sir. Thank you. And then uh, Ryan Ofalsa, good afternoon, watching from Palar Integrated School, SDO, Taguig City, and Pateros. We have a lot of audience Actually, I'd also like Luzon, to acknowledge eh? my, my artist friend, Emil Bartz from Luxembourg, who's watching right now. Okay, yeah. Wow. So the Katipunan came from Luzon. So they're all watching. I think these are descendants. Actually, my... Just my, kidding. Actually, the Paredes says, uh, also. come from Ilocos, actually. Our, ah, Ilocos. Yeah, but, you know, all the way from Ilocos to Surigao. So mm, uh, north to south. Yeah. Yeah. We will not ask who is your president. <laughs> Since that's a locus, we will avoid the question. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Ferdy, uh, uh, Ferdy wa was saying that you are a uh, dedicated and accomplished artist. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So maybe uh, someone in the audience has a, has a comment, a question. Yes, Miss Massey. Yeah, a special microphone for his cabanas. Yes. Yes, special mic for you. Hello, hi there. Sir, uh, I was just wondering well, how many more of this are you, this kind of artwork are you planning to make? And uh, do you have other heroes or other historical scenes in mind that you wish to do in the future? Um, so with Pamgrass, because this is a this project is commissioned by Pamgrass Hotel, so we intend to put a uh, sculpture like this in every floor landing. So since we are seven floors, so uh, so far we, we this is the third one. So there are more, there are four more to go. No? So I do not know yet, like who is going to be or what's going to be the the next theme. No, but. Yes, yes. An answer from <laughs> so, um, Papam Grass. So uh, they started actually in 2015 before before Palm Grass, uh, during Palm Grass construction. We already planned what would be the names of the floors at Palm Grass to Cebu Heritage Hotel. Of course, Radel was part of the designer of Palm Grass. So we, we planned that it should be a wood relief. And then Radel chose wood as the material, as the medium. So um, we named the different floors. We started with Leon Kilat of Angkagubo Tasubo. That was unveiled on Independence Day of 2017. At first, we were so ambitious. We thought Radel could do it in seven months. We said, yes, we will have, <laughs> you will be able, when we open Palm Grass in the soft opening in 2016, we would be able to show all seven, seven wood sculptures. <laughs> so... So we are so we are realized it's very hard because the wood is so hard and so instead of having one in 2016 we published the Leon Kilat book um, by by publisher Trust the Abri Incorporated in 2016 but we had the first wood sculpture Leon Kilat of Ang Kagubut book in 1898 and that was on Independence Day of 2017. So of course, the next, the second, is we 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 launched it during uh, we unveiled it during the 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 anniversary of Hardin Dagami at the seventh floor. Our second wood sculpture. So we 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 wanted one first the Leon Kilat. Second is the it Kapitong Andana seventh floor is named in honor of Lapu-Lapu. So we unveiled Sangka sa Maktan, the Battle of Maktan. In, December, in September 
2018. That's uh, less than a year after. Less than a year after. So twen that's 2018. So we did not have any in 2019. And 2020, we should have unveiled this 2020. But then the pandemic happened. And 2021, we were still struggling with the pandemic. And Rodel was thinking, is our project pushing through? <laughs> of course, we don't stop. COVID will not stop us. The typhoon will not stop us. So we have here. So next we have, we at our this is for the Kaunung Andana, sixth floor, um, General, General Arcadio Maximum. Our Ikapito, Ika, Ika, Ika Limang Andana is named Padre Toribio Padilla in honor of the chaplain at the Cebu Katipunan. Our fourth floor, Ikaupat ni Andana, is named Candido Padilla. We said General Candido Padilla. Uh, he, he was the leader of the Cebu Katipunan before Leon Kilat came. And our Ikatulong Andana is named in honor of the president, president of the Cebu Katipunan, General Luis Flores. And our ground floor, even if he is not a Cebuano and he is not a Filipino and he is not a Katipunero, we name our ground floor Gobernador Inocencio Honquera. The, because Palm Grass is located along Honquera Street and it is because of a knowing General, uh, Gobernador Inocencio Honquera that we learned about the Cebu Katipunan because we researched about it. So Gobernador Inocencio Honquera was the, gov the, the Spanish governor of Cebu in the late 1890s. But even if he was, he was a Spaniard, he was a liberal and against the abuse of the friar. So you watch out for, for the rest of the sculptures to be made by Radel. We thought it would be seven months, but it could be seven years, <laughs> hopefully. This year na. Uh, there's a question uh, for you. Are there level floors dedicated to Visayan women hero heroines to showcase the equally important role played by them? From SDO Tapat. So um, we really, Birdie. we really yeah. studied about the leaders of the Cebu Katipunan. We were really so frustrated where there were just nearly ten or just a handful of women leaders. So we have Juliana Revilla. So there is no floor named in honor of the Cebu Katipuneras, but we have rooms named in honor of them. We have our sweet room, our Lawak Principalia, our Lawak Ilustrado, named in honor of Juliana Revilles. So we have also have a song, Gugman Gihandum. You can watch it at YouTube, Pamgrass account of Pamgrass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel. It is Gugman Gihandum. It is in honor of Juliana Revilles, one uh, 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 he was, she was an active planner of the revolution in Cebu. And she was the wife, the second wife of Candido Padilla. So we named that, that room in honor of her. Uh, and then we also have Tuluk Kababayin Nagtahi Isa Bandera, the three women who, who made the, the flag, the, the, the Philippine flag here in Cebu. And uh, those are three women. So... There are other women like Pasavir, Paulina Padilla. So we were not able to make the name floors in honor of them. So our play, Abdik Paskilat, it also featured Constancia Alaura. We have, we have also dishes named in honor of these women warriors. And so uh, Constancia Alaura, we made her as the love interest or someone who got, who loved Leon Kilat in our play, Abdik Paskilat. So... So that's that's the story of women in our history. In the history, yes. We have so many messages. I hope we still have time. From Pam Manalo, good day, Sir Radel. Have you also thought and have been inspired for this sculpture to be a, to be a message to never stop fighting for what is right, especially on the current issues in this country? Yes. Uh, in fact, I think that's that's really the main message of, of mm. the work, no? that we should be inspired by the examples of our heroes like uh, General Maximum to, to fight and defend the nation you know, from against uh, mm, invader. foreign invaders, for no, example. 
And I think uh, we still face the threat even now. Mm -hmm. Do you mass produce your artworks for souvenir or a memento? Actually, I'm a printmaker, and uh, as printmakers, we we actually must produce our works, no? But yeah. of course, this is uh, like a limited edition series. So yeah, I do, I do. Uh, it's one way of democratizing art. Yeah. There's a um, uh, hi, uh, Bricks Garnica, Garnica, yeah, from Cardones Integrate Jose Cardones Integrated School. SDO Tapat from Maribic, Maribic, Itraya Alaban from Davao City, who is from Tuburan. I think uh, Davao City, Tuburan, uh, Zimmerman, the wife, the ex wife of, is from Tuburan. Yes, Elizabeth Abeliana Zimmerman. Yeah, she's from Tuburan. So we have here another lady. Uh, she is Maribic pala. Maribic, she lives there in Davao. Uh, is the great, 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 great granddaughter of General Maxilum. So there you are. You have one of the descendants. What is your personal message uh, together with the inspirations and personal learnings of this sculpture to students or the Kabataan of today? Um, actually, one thing we learn from from the lives of our heroes, no, like Bonifacio Rizal, is they act, they were actually very young when they when they did all these acts of courage and bravery. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so so I think it's the same thing also even with our Cebuano heroes like Maxilo. Mm -hmm. They started young, you know. They started the revolution and they were very young. No? So I think now. Uh, that, that's a challenge to, to our yeah. young people. Like, uh, how far can we really go to, to, you know, like, can we really die for our country if it comes down to it? The rebels are now old men. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's a challenge. Thank you. I think we have to uh, move on to the trivia quiz because of the time element. But we thank you all. Uh, Mary Ann Santiago, Chona, Robelita, thank you so much. Thank so you. we have a tri thank you so much, Radel. If not for the time constraint, I'm moving here. Now this is my cue to be. <laughs> thank you. We have a trivia quiz for the on-site audience. So you are the on-site audience, and we have a very nice prize for this. What is the title of the wood? sculpture the kinulit what is the title of this beautiful artwork somebody please uh, answer and you win a prize uh-huh yes uh do we have uh, somebody who can answer us sir The question again is, what is the title of the wood sculpture? Hi, sir. Yes. Sir Duane. So good evening is, the answer is, General Arcadio Maxilum. General Arcadio Maxilum. I actually don't have the answer. It is correct. Wow. You get a humba ni maxilum. Humba ni maxilum. You can get it right now. Or maybe later. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Dwayne. Now we have a question, a trivia quiz again. Um, from the... This is now for the online audience. Online audience. Uh, but if you are here, you can, yeah. What is the original name of the mountain camp of Arcadio Maxilum in Tuburan? The original name of the mountain camp. You saw it earlier in the video that uh, denuded mountain. What is the original name of the mountain camp of Arcadio Maxilum in Tuburan?
The price is a uh, soak and chill with Hilot Binisaya. That's five hours, right? In one of our rooms here. Yes, in the dipping pool. And you get to have a Hilot Binisaya. Mm -hmm. So many questions for you, Radel. I wish we could answer them. Yeah. Any any uh, any answer? The question from Dad, Dana, Dana, Jerdy Onrales. What techniques can you give us, Sir Radel? What techniques can you give us as students who want who want to be an artist like you one day? Because in my case, drawing is one of my favorite pastimes to do. Watching from Capitan Jose Cardona's integrated, yeah school yeah well we are waiting for the answer uh she is asking what techniques can you give us as a student uh, who wants to be an artist like you one day because in my case drawing is one of my favorite pastime to do watching from capitan jose cardones integrated school actually drawing is very important and I think it's the, wow. the, the most basic you know um, form of art you know you really start with drawing you know? in fact uh, I started the drawing this everything is just imagination mm -hmm. I did not have any references actually except maybe for the face of maximum but everything is um, I, I just tried to, to really figure out anatomy you know everything so, so you really start with drawing. So, Are just, you, oh, yeah. so you just have to really work hard to improve your drawing always. There's a lot of YouTube tutorials for that. Mm. Yeah. So Dana, there you are. That's the answer. You just hone your skill in drawing. Mm. Uh, are you selling your your drawing studies? Um, um, I haven't thought of that yet, but yeah, uh, why not? <laughs> Auction. Yeah. Uh, according to Ferdi Apartishu from SDO Tapat, today's activity is very timely because we're on the eve of the National Arts Month, February of every year, Pag Pagpat Pagpati Palm Grass, the Cebu Heritage Hotel. <laughs> thank you, Sir Ferdi. And then Dana says, thank you also, Sir. From the NQC page, uh, very informative. Thank you very much. That's Anna Michelle Pablo. Thank you very much. Very informative and also very inspiring from Ian Stefan Ma. Triple thumbs up. Vanessa Rabaya Mabuhay, watching from SDO Tapat, Upper Bikutan Elementary School. Thank you. So do we have an answer for that? the name of that hill? on which uh, fought his battle, General Maxilum fought his battle, the mountain top in, in Tuburan. Muragwa na Google. I think it's an esoteric knowledge. For <laughs> the original name, huh? No answer? Ah, yes. What is your, your new question, especially for the online audience? So, because no one can answer that question. So, the answer for that question is Mount Anihau. Anihau Mountain. So, it is um, where um, they went after the Battle of Tiburan. Mm. And that's how he, that's where he came from when he, before he went to Sudlon. Mm. Uh, for the second phase of the revolution in Cebu. So my another question, so from the life of Maxilum, what is the name of the second wife of Maxilum? Did you from pay that attention? video, wala ga po yung answer <laughs> She is the one who is the commander. The commander of General Maxilum. Mm. Because si what, is the, what is the name of the of the of the of the wife of the second wife of General Maxilum. Sir, <laughs> do you remember? 
online, yeah. To answer through the comment section of the Facebook page. This oh, there is a reply from Nell Noisel, Mountain of Anihau. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, Nell, but you can always come here. Yeah. Anihau from Lyndon John Honson. Oh. Was, did, we, did we monitor that? Do we have the time for that? Or, because they might have just one. Did, did they answer before I, I said the correct answer? No, oh, it popped up, but we can always check the time. Yeah. So the, did anyone answer who is the wife? Who was? Who is the second wife? The commander of, of General Maximum? No one. You will have a very simple question. Next question. <laughs> so next question. I think we need to give the prize to Nell Noisel. Because? Because I think it popped up just now before okay. you revealed it. Nell Noisel, yes. I think she's one of the tour, tour guides, yes. Mountain of Anihau. Anihau could be Anahau in Tagalog, no? We, we don't know. Anihau, yes. So, very interesting. Thank you so much. So, it has been won. The Soap and Chill plus Binisayang Hilo. So, uh, I think that we're about, yes, Radel, no more words for, for the audience. We have so many comments. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, there you are. Yes. Uh -huh. So thank you very much. I think uh, everyone is ready now for a humba ni maxilum. Do we have it? Cocktails, the I cup cocktails ni Juliana. Juliana what was the name of that? Reveal, yes. So cocktails uh, await us. So I thank you all for, for coming and for uh, watching us online. And um, uh, yes, Ms. Agrippina, no more, no more words except that we just thank you all. Daghang salamat. Uh, marami pong salamat sa audience nato. Yeah, natin. Oh, oh. Muchas gracias. <laughs> okay. There you are. You can have your photo taken. Si Arcadio Maxilom ang usagid sa pinakadugay na ni Surrender sa Guba. No? Naganang ka na mga, mga leaders sa uh, anti-Spanish nga war before that. Nga murag uh, mas nauna sa pagpag surrender pero lahi si si Maxilum kay medyo dugay gid sa ni surrender no so ni away gid sa kontra it starts with a an increasingly important town on the northwest coast of Cebu many people are competing for the land in that area and the most prominent landowners in Tuburan were the Maxilom family and the Tabu Tabu family. The primary competitors with the Maxilom family in Tuburan during the late 19th century were the Tabu Tabu family. These two families are now connected and that Fausto Tabu Tabu, the contrabida of Ar Arcadio Maxilom, it, they're actually stepbrothers. What brought Arcadio to Cebu City and to San Nicolas? And that was, of course, after he was, after the Tabo Tabo family began to take over the politics of Tuburan. They were already feuding with one another. Arcadio moved to San Nicolas in around 1896. Tabo Tabo Fausto accused him, slandered him of being head of the Katip of one of the terrorists of the Katipunan in Manila. He decided to leave his family and move to San Nicolas, which at the time, when there is preparation for revolution. Maxinom's educational level was much less. We realized that he worked closely with the parish priest of Tuburan, a man named Mauricio, Father Mauricio Esmero. Esmero was very influ influential in teaching Spanish to Arcadio Maxinom. 
So he was educated locally. He is a leader from the town of Tuburan who comes to the city of Cebu towards the end of the 19th century. And in San Nicolas is where he met many of the people who were later involved in Ankagubut Sasupu in April of 1898. He became a part of that community and he, be he began to be influenced by many of the changes that were occurring all over the Philippines in the end of the 1890s. He lived there, he met and worked with Luis Flores, uh, Candido Padilla, all of the major leaders of the Ankagubu in April of 1898, in that spot where he became and emerged as a leader. Si Tancadio was a natural leader. Kanang magdula ang mga bata, silang mga bata, mo-organize dayo na siya. In the face of Spanish uh, oppression, he was totally against it. The Spanish Guardia Civil occupied Buran. He observed tyrannies and crusades from the Guardia Civil to the Fenomalistic women. Tancadio, he was the, a very brave general. Pero pag abot na gani sa family life, pag abot na sa asawa, mahadlok na na siya. He was considered under the asaya. After the Kagobo, the rebels, as we know, were chased out of Cebu City by the re Spanish reinforcement. He continued his march to the town of Tuburan. Together with 30 people, he entered the town and warned the civil guards surrendered without shedding blood. However, on April 15, the steamers Baiz and Vitkaya arrived and the Battle of Tuburan began. This, is, this lasted for eight hours from 5.30 in the morning until 1 a.m. and his brothers, cousin and nephews died. This combat left the town deserted and because of the anger of the Casadores, they burned the entire town but they saved the church, the convent and the Camarin of Fausto Tabo Tabo. General Arcadio Maxalom and other Tuburanons encamped at the mountain of Anihau after the Battle of Tuburan against Spanish forces in mid April 1898. The mountain, which is now known as Bateria, also became one of Maxelum's camps in the war against the Americans. Eventually, they took refuge at Sudlon, you know, at, up in the hills, and prepared to, to defend Sudlon against the Spanish. Ako lang gipakita dere ang usaka moragsin sa gubat, no? Kaya kasi Maxelum ang godagan manisag kaning battles no kay um, gikan sa katong ilang uh, revolution uh, kontra sa mga Spaniards no and then sa kuan uh, ang ila sang kaning gubat uh, kontra sa mga Amerikano makita diri nga si si General Maxilo murag ni emerge ano murag mura sa gisaka gikan sa sa trenches murag medyo maalam sa sila gamay sa sa kaning art of war no misaka siya sa trend so it's a it's a sign of bravery on his part no ang yang leadership na din siya mahadlok uh, against the bullets kaning mga leader mong good sa una kung do na sila yung mga uh, mga vision to 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 lead towards freedom, towards um, emancipation from mga tyranny, oppression. Dun ang ang huna huna na nila. It's God given. It's being it's being ordered by God. So sila um, gusto na kayo ang pang pang pangmati o pang huna huna na they are um, endowed with uh, divine powers that's being passed on generationally to those that's being seen as somebody who can lead. 
can almost uh, encounter Fihas. Always victorious. Yet he's not he's not seen in the area of operation. There were talks na may anting-anting ka. Kanang anting-anting na dinig makita. Luis Flores, Presidente of the Republic of Republican, uh, Philippine Republican representatives in Cebu with the other generals around him. Alex Arcadio Maxilo as governor of Cebu to replace Spanish General Montero. Knowing that the, the Spanish authorities in Cebu and the Guardia Civil of the Spanish authorities were weakening, he wrote a letter demanding him to leave Cebu. The Spanish government, led by Montero, surrendered Cebu and its officials, official properties to the revolution. He hears of the arrival of the American gunboat Petrel. The flag of the Americans were already raised at Fort San Pedro. Some of the leaders of Cebu City at the time signed the peace document. They surrendered the city to the Americans. But the rest of the forces and many of the people who the civilians in it, they didn't surrender. They moved to San Nicolas. Then when the Americans spread out into San Nicolas, they moved to El Pardo. Maxilom has not himself surrendered, but many people in Cebu City had surrendered. He stood until everything else had fallen. The local leaders have decided to capitulate. There was an era of prosperity awaiting for the new colonial master and so the uh, local elites grabbed that opportunity but not general maxilom and everybody else who were on his side eventually the americans prevailed later in, in 1900 in, in january of 1900 against the americans who were attacking He surrenders and what you have to do when you surrender to the Americans is you had to take a loyalty oath but then later after he realized that the Americans were really taking control and, and he began to have similar feuds with people even in Tuvaran again right he begins to decide that he needed to resurrect the, the revolution against the Americans actually he did not surrender there was no difference of surrender the statement he, he said I will not surrender, surrender my love to my country. 